Hey everybody, this is session three of my play, my solo playthrough of Dungeoneer, the Realm of the Ice Witch. I've just defeated an ice dragon, which uh, I wasn't really sure I'd be able to do, but I did that last round. I've turned, I, I've, I've discovered and turned in Emmy. I've also realized that my dice roller was not visible on camera for many of the rolls, so I will leave it right up there uh, so that I don't do that again. And now the only quest that I have left to accomplish is to uh, to get to the Glacier Canyon and defeat the Frigid Demon. My problem is that I don't have a Glacier Canyon yet on my map. There's not one there yet. So I have to bide my time until one shows up. And now I could just stay where I am, uh, but but that seems kind of boring. But at the same time, I literally have no place to go. Um, so I'm kind of thinking that the place that makes sense, and maybe this is where I was headed, I don't remember, um, is down here to the hot springs, because I still have, I'm down one health point. I can go there and heal. It feels like the right thing to do. So this is the beginning of my turn. So the, the beginning of the turn, uh, you draw a card, a map card, and place it somewhere on the map. This is a grim crossway. This is, again, a place I, I don't really anticipate having to go. So I'm going to just kind of put away over here off to the side of the, of the board, which isn't even on camera. But I'm just kind of hoping that I don't have to go there because I don't, there's no reason to go there. Okay, so that's that. Then I have to process the Winterize spell. I am on a space that is not yet frozen. So according to the Winterize spell, I have to make a roll. And on four or more, I'm supposed to put a frozen token down on that space. I think it's four or more. Yeah, four or more freezes freezes the space. So this is now a frozen space, as it turns out. That's too bad. Now, I do have a possible solution for that, and that is your hero has plus one melee... No, wait. As a response, you may discard this card, remove all frozen tokens. Well, that says pretty specifically as a response, which says to me that, for instance, I, I would need to be under attack to use this card, uh, for that purpose, and, and that is not the case. So for now, there's not a whole lot I can do there. Okay, so that was that. Now I'm on to my turn. Now, it is... Uh, I have two actions, or actually, do I have two or three? Two actions, because my movement speed... No, three now, because I'm an Arctic Walker. My hero has a plus one movement speed. And in addition, your hero has one melee on a frozen space. Okay. So I've got three actions. So I'm kind of thinking that one could be to draw a glory card, which grants me an Arctic Squash. And this is awfully convenient because I recover two health. Oh, no. Okay. I thought that was to remove a frozen. So that's not all that convenient. But that is a nice thing to have. So that's one action. I might as well just go for a second action this turn. Another firebomb. That'll be handy. Uh, so I've got three cards in my hand now. I've got three on in my learned pack. So I'm pretty well set up, I think, arsenal-wise for this frigid demon. I just, again, need to find the frigid demon. So that's one, two. Um, I guess I could move down to the hot springs and heal but if i move <laughs> then i'm gonna i need to play a peril but as i've said i'm gonna have to move at some point i have nowhere to go i may as well move okay so anoku is gonna move down to the aurelian hot springs and that's the end of her turn then i will draw a card oh okay so this is a one peril and I'm on a two peril place so this does not fulfill the budget so that's one peril 
and then I have to draw another peril to satisfy the requirement. Unfortunately, that's a big old four, but I guess I'll, uh, I'll do this in order. Actually, an Arctic shift isn't that bad, to be honest, especially given that I don't even have any place to be. Oh, and that's something I forgot to do. This token, during the Winterize spell, is supposed to move, and I'm just moving the token in an S pattern across, or apparently not an S pattern, um, in a pattern across the board. I I could put it here, but that just feels like it really nerfs the the Arctic shift that I know is about to happen, because then I just move one space, which doesn't seem all that severe. So I'm I'm playing a little bit on hard mode and moving it all the way to the end of the board. Okay, Shivering Rat. This card costs one less peril, that doesn't matter. Um, on that, melee, if you engage in melee, you get one wound no matter what. Well, this rat has a zero bonus to its magic, and Onoku has one bonus to her magic. I feel like the smart thing to do would be to play... To, to roll against magic on this. It also only has one health point, so this could go quickly, or who knows, it could kill Anoku. I don't know. So here's Anoku's roll. That's seven total, except that it's also a plus one because she's got that magic bonus. And so here's the rat's roll. Oh dear, that's an 8. So, that's a tie. I ruled last time that I was just going to call a tie a reroll. I don't know if that's the best, the best policy. It could be that... Would it be more fun if they each took damage? Like in... Yeah, I think that would be better. I mean, it would certainly speed things up. Because then I don't have to re-roll for this rat, because it would die. So there we go. Efficiency. Uh, however, that also means that I take uh, a point of damage. Now, you might think that's not that big of a deal. After all, I'm on the hot springs. And then you remember I have an arctic shift in my hand from the peril deck. Relocate a target on a frozen space, and this is frozen, to any legal location. Well, any is a very fuzzy term, so I use this token to mark what any is, and so she is going to be shifted. Wait, is it the whole card or just the player? Now that I think about it, I think it's the whole card. Relate, yeah, the space itself. Okay, so that's a different story. Because actually, I mean, I guess technically that's better it's better for Anoku, because at least she gets to stay on the space that's going to heal her. And I guess that moves with its target, I guess, technically. Yeah, why not? Okay, so we're down two health now. It's a new turn. It's a new round. So first things first, and that is draw a map location. Volcanic Plateau. Pay one additional movement point when you enter this space on your turn, or else take a wound. Okay, I'll just put that at the bottom of the map there. That's a that's a cool space. I think there's a quest that happens there, if I recall correctly, because I, I feel like I've been there before and suffered that penalty. Okay, so that's uh, that. And then the Winterize spell. Um, first, I'll move this creature, or this token. And then I'm on a frozen space, so I don't have to roll to see if the Winterize spell has an effect, because... It's already had an effect, essentially. Now, I could just spend this Arctic Squash instead of messing around with all the requirements of that card. Recover two health points when played if a hero is on a frozen space. Well, I'm on a frozen space. It is my turn now. So I'm going to uh, play this instant card and regain two points of health placing Onoku back up at 6. So those Arctic Squashes, those healing powers of the Arctic Squash. Uh, so she's 
she's she's healed and that's one action point she's used up now i'm a little bit nervous about where she is right now because because she's got she's got she's surrounded by some some not great places um she's got a pit trap over here uh she's got a dungeon entrance up there that's what that d means but i'm not going to go into a dungeon um you you can like i said you can combine sets of dungeoneer so if there's a d on a card you can just break out another set like call the lich lord instead of realm of the ice witch and set up a second board and and go delve into a dungeon it's pretty amazing uh and it's pretty fun but i'm not going to do that right now i'm just th this is enough for now especially since the lich lord is uh level four five and six and this is level one two and three so i don't think she's ready for the dungeon but i keep feeling like she should she she really needs to be over on this side of the map and i guess if i was if i was playing it like sort of so that it made sense this token would govern where the cards were going it's just literally because of the frame size i am putting them essentially where they can fit but i anticipate placing the important card like right about here or something like that just so that we can all see it um so i do feel like she needs to get over here so she spent one action point healing and now i feel like she's going to lose that action point <laughs> or that healing uh, over here because of this pit trap but that's what i'm gonna do i mean her her other option i guess is to go up and over i guess that would be the smarter option but what's this say this is this is concerning to me right here all monsters have a bonus to magical attacks and threats equal to the level of the highest level okay well that's only one but still that's a bonus that i don't really need to give monsters frankly this is a non-frozen space a lot of monsters get bonuses on frozen spaces but then again so does onoku i don't know we'll just go there oh actually she has two action points left so she can skip well she can't skip because there's a pit trap all right so she needs to roll a seven or or better now she's got three movement uh, bonus so she needs to roll a f uh, four or better on this die. And she rolled a five. Well, that's better than four. So she, avert she, she avoids the pit trap. And then I'm going to have her continue traveling yeah, this way. Because there's a lock on that gate. Might as well go up and over rather than over and then up. Because that's the easier path. Okay, so she's touched down. Oh, plus this is a four peril, and that's only a two peril. So she's touched down here in the bend. She did travel this round, so she does have to resolve the peril point that she's traveled to. This is exactly equal to the peril requirement, two and two. So this is the only card I have to draw. Target any one monster in a pack that monster immediately attacks the hero of the player who owns it okay so this is obviously a kind of a, a a spell or a curse that you are meant to play on another player who owns like animals um that doesn't apply here so i am going to discard that card and draw a different card and it's an avalanche Plus four to the all threats on a frozen space. And this is not a frozen space. That's good. Demons have a plus one this turn. That doesn't matter, luckily. If I fail a check against this avalanche, which is a threat of a four or greater, right here in the bottom left corner, then I inflict one wound and the opponent is tipped. Okay, cool. All right, so four movement for a four, uh, yeah, four four movement or a wound. Uh, so she, she, I mean, really, she can't fail that. Um, she has three three movement bonus. She rolls a one on the die, so that's an auto pass, pretty much. So she's fine. 
Yeah, okay, so that's her turn. Next turn. Frozen Lake. Anytime you enter this space, discard one card from your hand. If you have the fire orb, discard two cards from your hand or be tipped. See Recover the Fire Orb quest. That's cool. But luckily not applicable to us right now. Okay, Winterize spell. Oh, well, we're not on a frozen space. So actually I do have to roll for the Winterize spell. Luckily, it's three, which is not four or more. So there's no... The Winterize curse does not... Um, the, the the values of the die are a little bit weird. Like, if you play Dungeons & Dragons, you, you'll probably have an association of one being bad and something high being better. In this game, it just kind of flip-flops. Sometimes it's better to roll high, and then other times it's better to roll low. It's just not something that's not very consistent. So in this case, because the Winterize spell needs a four five or six to freeze a space it's really good that i only rolled a three this token will move to the grim juncture and now it's action point time yeah i might as well since i don't have i still have no place to go really so i might as well draw a card arctic nomad hero has plus one to melee cannot be tipped while on a frozen space little things like that. This is a permanent card. It is nice, but the Arctic Warrior ended up being better for me, I think. So I'm gonna... It's nice to have, but I'm, I'm probably not gonna use it necessarily right now. Uh, okay, so that was one action point to draw a card. And then I've got two more action points. And like I say, I anticipate being over here somewhere for that frozen canyon. So I'm just gonna move Onoku one two spaces to use up the rest of her action points. Uh, demons have a bonus to all attacks here equal to the level of you. Okay, so I've got three peril that I need to resolve. Demons have a bonus on this space. I'm hoping I don't draw a demon. That's my best That's my best hope. Okay, it's that, it's that one card that doesn't really apply to a solo game. Combine warp. Okay. Relocate the target hero to a space occupied by another hero. Okay, so that's just a an it's an auto fail. Like there you cannot fight against the combine warp. It is a it is essentially a trap. Oh what what did it what what, what cost does it have? A four, and I only needed three peril, so yeah, that, that satisfies the requirements. Um this is what that marker is for, so kind of I guess luckily that's the only effect. There are There is a plus two threat to traps on this space. It is not a frozen space. So there's st things to consider, but all told, that's not the worst result. Okay, next round, next turn. Cursed Ice Shelf. Collect an additional... Oh, collect uh, some number of additional peril equal to your level when you enter this space on your turn. Well, I don't really want to go there ever. How's that? Um, I guess I'll put it up here near the Ice Witch's castle. Holizar. Um, that's just a region I just don't ever want to go, frankly. I'm not interested in visiting th that neighborhood of the Ice Witch's realm. Okay, so that's everything, right? Um, I just drew the card... It placed the card. Nope. I knew there was something. So this thing has to move. I don't let this be on the same card as the player. Because that that, that makes it useless. So I'll move it to the next available card. Which is that one over there. Okay. It's now Onoku's turn. She has three action movement uh, action points and literally nowhere to go. Like there's just no place for her to go because we need to find the frozen glacier. So I think I'm just going to... Yeah, I think I'm just going to have to resolve a peril, uh, because if it, it's a it's a rule of my... I mean, this is all my rules, but I've decided, I decide, that if you don't use an action point, then you must draw a peril card. 
So I'm going to do that. And it's a blizzard. Each hero on a wilderness space is relocated to an adjoining space of your choice. All heroes on frozen must also come overcome a, a threat of plus five or take a wound. Okay, so this is really interesting. That's a neat card. Um, so I'm I'm blown over to an adjacent space. So I guess I'll just um, the the markers over to the to the east the southeast. So I guess I'll move Onoku back to the frozen the icebound swamp towards the marker. That's that's my policy. Now it said on an ice space you have to overcome an additional threat, which would have been fun because this is a plus two threat and plus two trap uh, space, but it was only applicable to frozen spaces. This isn't frozen, so that doesn't... Oh, wait! It's not frozen right now because I forgot to roll. I knew there was something I was forgetting. I forgot to roll to make it frozen. Okay, one. So again, uh, the Winterized Curse, higher is worse. So one is actually a good thing. Um, so, yeah. So nothing... There's no threat there because it's not a frozen space. Not even after a roll. Okay, so that was the peril resolved, so now it's the next turn again, and it is, we're running out of map cards, so Glacier Canyon, there we go, only one monster per turn may attack here, that's fine, hopefully we're not going to have, it's a, it's a four peril, and our goal is to defeat that ice demon, the frigid demon, sorry, um, so I don't need to roll for that Winterize spell, because I'm on a frozen space already. This will advance, however, to the next space. And now it's my turn. So I'm going to use two action points to get to the space. And there's four peril. Now, first, I, I do need to resolve the peril. Even though I'm, I'm there... I want to defeat the Frigid Demon, but, but there's peril to be resolved first. Okay, one Shivering Rat. That doesn't satisfy four, so I'll have to draw again. Four, okay. A Snow Demon. Perfect. That's perfect. So it says only one monster may, per turn, may attack here. So, in a weird way, that's, that's actually really good, because what they're saying is is that the Shivering Rat is the only thing that can attack me right now. And the way that I manage that is that I take a token and place it on there. And place a corresponding token on on the demon that isn't, that isn't attacking right now. So that demon is there. I guess I could probably, I could just use a mini for that too, couldn't I? This guy doesn't really look like a demon, but um, he's he's painted. <laughs> and that's better than, than, than the mini that I do have that looks like a demon, which is as yet unpainted. So I will, I will defer to the, the thing that is painted. And I will put that on there. So that's now we know that that's the threat. But that thing can't attack yet. First, the first thing that I drew was that stupid shivering rat, which hopefully is useless against me. This card costs one less. Okay. Oh, well that's fine. Okay. So unfrozen. Yeah. Okay. So no magic. No magic defenses really. Anoku has one magic def uh, bonus, so we'll, we'll roll, and she gets a an effective 12, because she's got that one bonus, so it's really not 5 and a 6, it's a 6 and a 6, Oop, hit the demon, so a 6 and a 6 for Anoku, I am going to be surprised if the rat is able to do that. It's not impossible, but it didn't happen. So seven. So the rat is just dead. So that's the only thing that can attack, apparently, this turn. Which is nice, 
except that I have got this frigid demon that really, really wants to kill me in the Glacier Canyon. Now, I have a choice. I could either say this happens sort of like out of turn, or this supersedes the turn. Or I could say rules as written, one, one monster attacks per turn on this space. And I could cycle it around and go up against this demon, th th this demon, and then cycle it around again and go up against that demon. I think it sounds harder to fight that one and then this one than to cycle it around, or, or rather than to let this one go now. I mean, ultimately, she's going to have to fight both of these creatures, so I, I guess probably ultimately it doesn't matter. And unlike, unlike uh, say, Pathfinder Adventure Card Game, when, when the goal is complete, that's not the end of the game. You still have to get back to the entrance, which actually I didn't realize is right there. <laughs> but still, you got to do it. It's not like you, you kill the thing and then it's dead. It, I mean, it is dead, but you have to then stay alive long enough to get away. Okay, so we're just going to go up against the local demon first and then the global demon next. Uh, oh, but wait. We have to tick the turn around. So, new turn. Uh, we got a crook. Uh, I just put that there. I mean, this is another place I don't really anticipate having to go to. It's already frozen, so I don't have to roll for the Winterize spell. The Winterize spell, obviously, is a lot more of an issue if you're mixing sets. If you've got, like, a dungeon, then you still, if, if you're playing this, you still have to play the Winterize thing because it's in the dungeon, and that's just totally, that's totally new. So, um, anyway, so now I'll increment or, or move the token, so next time it'll go way, way down there. That would be a fun problem to have. To get Arctic Arctic shifted somewhere and or, or something and to have to climb all the way back up the board that would be brutal. Okay, so now it's uh, my turn. Um, I do have well, I guess I should go. I should look and see what I'm up against. So this turn, I've got a snow demon facing me. And it's a dungeon lord monster demon. Okay, freeze. When this card attacks, all heroes in its space must overcome a magic threat, oh boy, of five or greater or be tipped. Uh, melee, inflict one wound or two wounds if the opponent is tipped. Okay, I see. I see why the tipping condition is significant here. Wow, a magic threat of five or greater. Oh boy, that's going to be interesting. Okay, so threats are, as far as I know, only one die. And I say as far as I know, meaning I believe that's the convention of this game from the official rules. I mean, I can do whatever I want. This is my solo playthrough. It's my solo game rules. But, yeah, I'm going to say it's one die. Just because that seems harder. So, a magic threat. She's got a plus one. So she needs a four or better on this die. Not to be tipped. And she rolled a two. So, Anoku gets knocked down. And now the demon is going to attempt to kill her uh, by inflicting one wound or two wounds. Okay, so two wounds with a melee attack. Oh, wait, that's not how this game works. What am I talking about? She gets to attack it. And if she uses melee, then she's going to get wounded. So it would be better for her to use magic. The problem, of course, is that his magic is five. He has a bonus of five. I mean, it's practically like he has another d6 to roll. So I've got a, a boost to melee. As a response, I can discard this and remove all tokens from... all frozen tokens. Okay, 
That's not that big of a deal, really, is it? No, because this demon, demon isn't benefiting from the frozen condition. And then there's the Arctic Nomad. Your hero has a plus one melee. Yeah, that's not that great. And then there's this. Then there is this. Target a demon and get rid of it. And actually, before it even can attack, I'm supposed to do that. So, I mean, that is definitely an option. Let's look at what I'm going to go up against here. Oh, this frigid demon is a joke compared to this snow demon. To complete this quest, defeat the frigid demon while on the glacier. Yeah, we're doing that. Frigid demon uh, inflicts one wound when you're attacking it magically, but its, it's magic is only a plus one. Frigid demon is not my problem. Snow Demon is my problem. Okay, good to know. I can play three cards in this space, so I've got plenty of action actions to take against this thing. So right now I'm going to roll magic against it. Because I am attacking it this round. I might be I mean we've already engaged, so I'm attacking. That's really a good roll. Five and a five for Anoku, which of course translates really to a five and a six because she does have one, one uh, magic thing. Now the problem is, obviously, that this demon has a plus five magic. So that's what he's starting with right now is a five. And then he's going to roll 2d6 for his magic attack. Oh, that's not... Oh, that's that's not bad, but it's also exactly the same. So six. So five and a six um, is exactly what she rolled, which means that uh, she's going to take one damage, one wound, and the demon is going to take one wound, but the demon only has two health points. So the fact that it's taking two wounds is really good. So that's two right now, or one wound rather. So he's only down to one health point. That went better than I'd expected, I will admit that. I, that doesn't mean it's going to continue to go better than I expect. So he's got his five bonus. She's got her one bonus. She's going to attack. Oh, can she get up? Um, I don't know that I have a mechanic for that in my solo game. I'll make one up. I'm going to say that if she wants to get up, she can discard a card for like glory points and then stand up with those glory points. No real reason. I mean, it doesn't actually matter, but that seems logical. There's a real there's sort of a a problem in this game f between sort of the significance of glory points i should i should say there's a problem within the solo game rules that i've made up the differentiation between the glory points and the movement points i feel like they're kind of they kind of do the same thing so i don't know i might have to finesse that a little bit anyway she's up she's on her feet she's gonna roll magic that doesn't look bad is that the same thing no six and a three this time but, of course, really it's a 6 and a 4, because she's got that nice little 1 point of magic bonus. So now the demon is going to roll, hopefully very poorly. No, not, not as poorly as she rolled, unfortunately. So the demon has gotten a, um, an 11. She's only gotten a 10. That, that wins. She wins. Uh, she, she fails that one. So she is knocked down to four health points. All right. So I'm cognizant that the next round, she's going to have to fight the Frigid Demon. And she has no healing powers right now. Now, if she defeats this creature, what does she get? She gets nothing if she defeats this creature. Okay. Yeah, so I'm very cognizant. My problem, too, though, is, as is often the case, 
It's got four. Hmm. Well, it's got four movement. So she could run. She could run from this guy and possibly, possibly that would work. Okay, let's go one more round. Let's see what happens if we go one more round with this demon. Feeling, feeling like it's worth it. It might not have been worth it. <laughs> oh, darn. So she got five and essentially a three because of her magic bonus. So she's only got an eight. He, he has to roll like a two and a one or a one and a one. He did not roll those values that I was hoping for. So he's got a 13 to her eight which knocks her down to three points. And I feel like on her next turn... Oh, wait, wait. Target the demon, discard it, collect glory equal to its remaining health. Okay. Um, I, th I think I'm going to have to do this. It, it only makes sense. I've been saving it for the frigid demon... This guy's really scary. He's taking me down to half health points. I think this is the right answer. Onoku casts, before the next round, casts the destroy demon spell and gets rid of that demon. And so it is now dead. Okay. That took care of that problem. Now, because I'm on this specific card... I don't actually have to contend with anything else until next turn when the Frigid Demon attacks. So that's good. So next turn, I get yet another map card. I'll just put that anywhere, pretty much. Oh, that, that actually can't go there because it's not accessible from any space. Nor is that... Oh, this is... S silly, because I'm never going to go here. So I'll just I'll, I'll just put this way over there. Basically off the map, but it doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, so now I need to... I don't need to roll anything for wind tries, but I do need to move the token. So he's way over there. And then finally, I have three action points to, to spend before I have to go into, into melee. So I, I could... I could... You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to draw and hope for an Arctic Squash. Well, I got Om Omnisus's, Omnisus's favor. Reroll one if your hero's die rolls made, it made the turn and draw one card. If your hero's die rolls made this... Oh, roll run of your hero's die rolls made this turn and draw one card. Okay, well that's huge. I mean, that's a that's a big deal right there. So that's one action point. This is two action points. Warmth. Recover one one, one uh, health. Okay, so I'm on a three glory space. Oh, but I didn't move into that space. So I think... So my... my I treat that the peril and the glory essentially lingers on that space until depleted, and then it doesn't replenish until you move back onto that space, essentially. Um, I know that I've played the Destroy Demon card on this space, and I discarded a card to, um, to play something. I feel like I only have one glory left. Uh, and re-rolling would be awfully nice. But you know what? Ultimately, no, no. This would be, yeah, re-rolling would be great. That's the one I want to use. All right, so I'm going into combat. And that is defeating the uh, Frigid Demon. He's got two health, five melee, and then one magic. And if you engage w in magic with it, it inflicts one wound automatically. I've only got three <laughs> health points uh, and one glory to spend. 
it would probably make a lot more sense to leave right now. But it has two movement speed. I feel like I could move off of this space. Because, I mean, if I leave, then when I come back, I'm still going to have to fight. I, the, the peril will replenish. And I'll have to fight more demons before I can fight this demon. So, yeah. Doesn't really make sense. And there's only one glory left. So, I think. I could be mistaken. Maybe I only played one card here. Um, but I think there's only one glory left. So, I could recover health. I feel like a reroll would be better. Yeah, absolutely a reroll would be better. What? There's not even any discussion about that. What am I thinking? Okay. So, this demon has a plus one to its... That's uh, going to be a very decorative die. Um, here's my shadow run die. So it's got one point of magic. Onoku has one point. So we'll go for that. We'll see what happens. All right. So a five and a three. Not a great roll. Of course, that three I'm going to upgrade to four because of her bonus, her magic bonus. And then the monster is going to roll. One bonus for it already. Unbelievable. Oh, no, not unbelievable. This is great. Ooh, darn it. That was a four and a three. I said unbelievable because I thought I thought I'd gotten the same the same role, but actually this is not the same role. So that's a five and a three. This is a five and a four. Obviously she wins that round. Unfortunately, she takes a damage anyway because she engaged with ma the, this demon with magic. So that's a two for for her health. And uh, he goes down to a one because he had he's starting with two, so this is a, a very fair match at this point. Like, well, actually, she still had the upper hand, I guess, because she was on three. Okay, so let's let's go again. I feel I I'm, I feel like this could happen. This could. Oh darn it! I knew I shouldn't have said anything. Four and a one for her. Uh, well, of course, that's really a two because she's got their magic bonus. I have a feeling we're re-rolling pretty soon here. Uh, so this is... I guess, should I should I re-roll? I should probably re-roll now, right? Because it would be weird for me to be able to choose whether I re... Yeah, okay. I'm going to re-roll this one and draw another card. So that goes away. I get to draw another card. I'm really hoping it's an Arctic Squash. It is not, but it is a Destroy Demon. Wow, that worked out awfully nicely for me. Uh, I'm going to re-roll her die, because I'm I'm already engaged with, with the demon, so I don't feel like I can just cast Destroy Demon now, because it's supposed to occur before it attacks. Okay, so she got a 5 and a 3. Still not all that great, but th this could could take it. 4 and a 3 again for the demon. Uh, I need to get these dice checked. Uh, so that's a 1 and a 4 is 5, and a 3, so they're equal to each other. Which is, oh, bad, actually. Okay, so the demon dies. That's great. However, because they were equal rolls, and I've already established that if it's a tie, they both take damage. So she gets knocked down to one point. And unfortunately, there is an unconditional clause here that says magic inflict one wound. Which means that her little one point of health that she had left goes away. Which means that I'm afraid my hero has died. So I have completed the quest to kill the Frigid Demon. The townsfolk of Northern Village are probably very happy because the frozen wasteland of the realm of Sholazar no longer has a frigid demon running around it on the loose. I mean, that's got to be a good thing. It's a real pity, though, that the hero who went out to go accomplish the, the heroic feat um, also perished. 
And that's it. That's um that's Dungeoneer, Realm of the Ice Witch. It's it's a fun game, um, both as a solo and a multiplayer experience. I'm obviously playing it solo. These are my rules. Um, I've kind of jotted some of them down. It's still kind of a work in progress. But I really enjoy it. This is um, this this is the card game that I take on when I travel, like because it's just so conveniently sized. I mean, it's just it's a hundred and ten cards, and it's just so easy to throw into a suitcase or a backpack, and then you have this really cool randomized board every single time you play and it's just really really fun and all the quests i mean there aren't that many quests only 14 quests but combined they they make for a really different experience every time because i've i've rescued emmy before i've had that quest before but i don't think i've had it with fighting the frigid demon so the fact that i had to do one thing and then the other made it feel a lot different than the other time when I had to do that and then something else. So it's it's a lot of fun. Um, it's such a cool little game. And then, like I said, if you really want to go all out, you can combine it with another set and have uh, a situation where you're delving into dungeons for other quests and doing other things. So it's it's a lot of fun. Highly recommend it. Whether you play it solo or whether you play it uh, with other people, it's it's well worth it. So if you can if you can find a copy, get a copy. It's a lot of a lot of fun. Okay, thanks for watching. Um, maybe next time I don't know. I might play more Dungeoneer. I might play more Pathfinder card game. We'll see. Um, thanks for watching.